Oh, um, she's terrific. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Oh, hi, everybody. Hello, Roz. Hello. <laughs> hi. hi. Beth. Hi. I'm starting to know people's names for the first time through Zoom. I didn't know anybody. It's really yeah. cool. <laughs> it's really, it's really cool. Yeah. Kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> It'll be really weird when we all kind of meet people we've never met before and feel so close to them. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I really feel like I know these people very well. And yeah. I, love, I, love, I love Zoom. Nobody can sit in front of me. And I'm little. And so you can I see. Can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can block your view. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, I was on speaker view. I didn't even see Sarah. She's probably, have you been here the whole time? No, I just got here just a couple oh. minutes ago. <laughs> oh, we were having a little party without you. <laughs> You're having a good time. <laughs> good. <laughs> love it. Well, I love it that I'm getting to know people. I can, I'll never remember anyone's names. I just, I'm just <laughs> not, I don't have those brain cells. <laughs> but I'm beginning to be able to connect faces with their art. Oh, that's that cool is too. such a treat. Yeah, I agree. It really mm -hmm. is. It is really fun. Yeah. And a lot uh, of people, like, I love uh, following everybody. Following everybody on Instagram. Don't show really it on cool. me. Mm. There are a lot of us on Instagram, and it's really, really, really nice. It fun. is. It is yeah. fun. A little I, I never thanked uh, the people who participated in my blue project. Yes. My blue Lincoln. Thank you for becoming part of uh, Lincoln's bow tie. It was fun. Fun. Yeah, Sandy. Thank Nancy, you. And a Thank few you for including us. What? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the things that's interesting about digital art, actually. I mean, appropriation is there, but you must always credit and, and, and bring life to it, even if it's as small as those were, you know? Um, I it's really loved it. I thought it was a different kind of collaboration that was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. Bernice, I liked your ceiling. I liked that your ceiling. <laughs> Bernice po posted on Instagram, the only piece of her apartment that has any space. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I saw Great. I think she should get some scaffolding and, and make it girl. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make you laugh. I'm tilting my laptop, but here's my ceiling. There's art. <laughs> Uh, you got art on your ceiling. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, I couldn't do it because I can't get up on a ladder, but it's oh, an I'm idea. Just kidding. I didn't expect you to. No, no, it's an idea for Carter Burden. Uh, a ceiling show. Oh, you got the outside <laughs> space? You could have a ceiling show. <laughs> you could have it in the gallery, you know, do it on a uh on the floor and then have somebody install it on the ceiling mm -hmm. oh i see yeah that's cool you know mm -hmm. it, it could be done. the background you know the the uh, cistern chapel the sister the 16th <laughs> it should be the sister's chapel i agree yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's not leave the guys out. Right. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> They're already a minority. Right. right. We've got a couple of guys here. I see yeah. them every once in a while. We have a number, yeah. we have a number of them. <laughs> Hi, Isaac. Thanks, thanks for being part of my blue project. We talked about right. that for a second. Hi. Hey. Uh, what project is that? Uh, oh. Something on Instagram. Beth just brought up that a bunch of us are on Instagram, and I'm. I did this series that popped out of me about Lincoln, and it was at the end of it. Lincoln was going blue. He was black and white through the oh. whole series, right. and he went blue. And I put out this call and said, if anybody wants to join in and be part of Lincoln's bow tie, please send me an image, and you'll your image will be in his bow tie. And I cited everybody. Boy, making those, uh, I did them in one note and then pasted them to Instagram when I credit everybody. But it was a, a lot of work to, to credit, but I, I thought it was a lot of fun. And I really was glad so many of you joined in. And Isaac Thank you and for that. Sandy and I missed um, it. <laughs> yeah. Ellen and a bunch of you who did it. Betty? Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Bernice. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hello. 
Hello, Miss Susan. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Ross. Ross, did you ever do the uh, mm -hmm. entire, um, you could do it digitally, I guess, the Lincoln Memorial in Eve's Klein Blue? Oh, I know somebody, you, maybe you said something about Eve's Klein Blue, but I thought that was really fun. Well, you know, uh, but the whole Lincoln Memorial, you could color blue. I could, but you know what really struck me about Lincoln was his face. It just, I haven't done a portrait in 35 years. It's just, I looked at his face and yes. it just- It's quite a face. I yes. thought, I, I just started drawing it and I didn't stop, but I think I've stopped now. <laughs> yeah. Well, when did you decide to stop? Uh, I was thinking for some reason that I, I was going to do them every day until the inauguration. I was really embroiled in what was going on in the country and I didn't know what to say in my art about it. I, you know, you want to just kind of go, you know, up yours or something. And I, I don't work that way quite that way, even though I have a lot of anger going on. Um, and I am an interfaith minister too. So I try to, with my work, I try to bring some kind of spiritual aspect, even to the gun show. I mean, I like to look at both sides of, of a question and Lincoln's face is all about that. Wow. Even though he went blue, believe me. <laughs> he went blue. <laughs> but, you know, I kept it, I tried not to make it antagonistic. It wasn't that he went blue politically he did of course he did go blue but he was also sad you know and yeah because he was blue yeah yeah they, he was blue in many ways um suffered from depression they say yes yeah no. he had terrible yeah look oh his what wife he came did into. too look what he came into <laughs> yeah, it was very depressing times whoa it was the worst right yeah i mean still a war and his his face is like a it's like a civil war. Like a roadmap of his. Yeah, the his crags. Yes, he's. I work from that. Yeah. Oh, that's sure. a beautiful picture of him, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh. It's just. It's a um, really realistic picture. When yeah. I was like five years old, I had read, you know, there was a book, a children's book that won a Caldecott Award. Do you remember that, Abe, Abe Lincoln in Illinois? I which, read that. Oh, that meant so much to me. I wanted to be like Abe Lincoln, studying, <laughs> even in a cabin, in a log cabin. I, I, <laughs> wow, well, I see that Ellen just wrote, did anybody read Lincoln and the Bardo? I did, I thought it was one of the greatest books ever. Amazing, right? It's an amazing it. book, oh. you haven't read it. Lincoln right. and the Bardo? Yeah, it won the man. It won the uh, Man Booker Prize, I think, two years ago. Yeah. Really? What is the Bardo? Bardo is is the limbo between life and death. Oh, really? I never heard that term. Oh. Bardo. I didn't either till I read the book. <laughs> oh, I thought it was it was amazing. Who wrote it? Who wrote um, it? I put it in the chat. It's George Saunders. Sa oh. Saunders. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know, Ellen. Good, yeah. good to know. So it's such a great book, and and it's and you really kind of feel Lincoln in that, right? You feel his pain there. Yeah. And the ghosts in the graveyard. I mean, yeah. they're, they're talking. It takes a while to get into the book, but when you hang in there. It's pretty. It's a it's a real leap of imagination and and beauty of writing. And yes, it's like all these souls in the graveyard, including the the soul of his son. Mm -hmm. and how they're they're still wrestling with their place in earth or either they finally let go and they they go somewhere but it's it's not really it's it's magical yes <laughs> okay. wow. sounds that way magical realism great read i think so too um, roz are you um ready to present i think we should I think so. And Sarah, we didn't practice before, but I was talking about this with um, uh, Francie a little bit before you got on. I hope it goes well, but uh, one thing, PowerPoint takes over the entire screen. So I, I am going to go share my screen and hope it goes well, but you know, we're all used to, to going through things together yeah. here. <laughs> yes. So it'll work <laughs> out, but I am going to do a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so great. Yes, okay. Without further ado. I'm yeah, gonna share, um, share I'm going to go screen. ahead and mute okay. everyone. And then Roz, if you could unmute yourself um, and we'll get started. It's oh, cute. After you mute everybody, I, I unmute? Yes. Oh, washing machine, dryer, yeah. something. 
I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead and try to do that again. There okay. You go. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Ross. Whenever sure. you're ready, share your screen. I think so. I think I'm ready. Um, hold on one second. I'm cleaning up a few things first. Just one second. You can find. I find um, when I try to share PowerPoints on my share screen, it tends to be a little glitchy. So we'll bear with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I did some practicing with my husband this morning because it takes over both screens. It takes over everything. So mm -hmm. um, I think this is going to work. Um, so I'm just going to double click it and start. You guys see my screen? Yes. Great. All right, well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm uh, starting with the basics here. I think uh, many of you know, or maybe you don't, that, that I took a detour in my life that became the biggest adventure of my artist, artistic life. Um, and that was, uh, I, I now draw with a computer, you know, with a, with a Wacom pen and um, tablet. And I've been doing that for 35 years, but I didn't start that way. And, and I am really at my core a very traditional kind of artist. And this is just one of my earliest drawings that I did in college where uh, I guess it's the first time I really understood what the power of being an artist could be, mean. I, I, I actually inherited the ability to draw. Uh, I was just, you can't believe this, but I was a very shy child. You're gonna be looking at the side of me because I'm looking at a different monitor. Very, very shy, very awkward. Um, up until my mid-teen kind of almost getting into college years when art started to let me know who I was. But I have to say that um, drawing and being able to draw and be able to paint, as we know, it's, it's not everything, you know, it, it's, it's great if you can, but the larger thing that mixes with that at a point is when you understand why are you drawing something and what are you trying to say. And, and I, at this, this, this drawing came out of me when I was, uh, working from the model at the Lamar Dodd School of Art. Um, oh, are we recording this by any chance? Yes, we are. I kind of like that, just thanks, because I, I do like to mention my alma mater and I support them, <laughs> that's nice. Um, so, and, and I had some great studies there and we were all drawing the model, the courses were very rigorous and, and I had a wonderful teacher, um, Richard Olson, and, and he said, you know, well, you can draw, but, but what are you saying? Like, what, what, are, you, what are you feeling? And so what happened, I was drawing the model and all of a sudden I looked at this woman across the classroom from us. This was a few weeks after I'd had this particular professor and I just went after her. And, um, and I think the drawing says, you know, it has that emotional kind of um, impact. Uh, my early paintings, I'm just, uh, I, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I'm from an, a very old family from Connecticut, but we, I grew up in Atlanta and um, just kind of setting the scene there a little bit and went to the Lamar Dodd School of Art, which is at the University of Georgia in Athens, home with the B-52s, really rocking little town. And this is, uh, after I got out of um, school, um, I uh, was painting portraits in Atlanta. And this is a portrait of my mother. It's, it's, uh, this goes back to 1979, so if it's a little fuzzy, you can probably see why. Um, but I, you know, it was all about drawing and painting and color and form and, and, and emotion and content and all those things. Uh, and I can barely operate a toaster, so for me to be uh, working in a digital medium is, is rather remarkable. But this is what is an interesting thing is that my very first show in Atlanta, Georgia, I did, I painted these portraits of people, including my mother. And I decided while they were sitting for me to, and these are all in oils, um, to record them. Cause I just say, oh, be still a minute. And I go, oh, we know what you have for dinner last night. And you know, we, then I be, say, be quiet. And I recorded all their conversations, everything about teenage children and, and all sorts of activities. And when people came into the gallery, all the portraits, I put all of the tape recorders under the portraits. So, you know, people came in and the, the gallery was already kind of reaching off the wall in a way in my first show. And I only see this now when I look back, but technology sort of crept in from the beginning. So um, I call that show Talking Heads and that was way before the Talking Heads. Um, 
And it was actually covered by Newsweek Broadcasting because we got around it. Have you been in that show where all these all these portraits are talking to people? <laughs> it was it was kind of fun. And it was my nickname at that time, Tootie's Portraits. Remember, I'm from Atlanta. We all had nicknames. So I look back and think, wow, technology was there. Um, again, I'm still in Atlanta, but it was becoming a bigger city. Um, this is called Women at the Bus Stop and newsprint's already coming into this. And uh, I always, you can see my signature R.W. Diamond coming kind of on her shoulder blade. And, and there's a credit card stuck in the middle of her mouth and pennies. And I'm already kind of busting into some kind of media coming into my work. This is a piece called um, uh, US Dollar. And uh, a lot of my work seems to be about America in some way or another, whether it's dollar bills or Jesus or Coca-Cola, Nike. Um, it's, it's, it's got Americana in it. And of course, we're all about capitalism. So that was always a, a feature. You can see my feet where I stepped into this painting on the top left. And I remember this is an oil painting and that was a particularly, even though I paint rather lightly, I don't build up layers and layers and layers. Um, I, uh, the telephone rang when I was doing this. And so I don't know, that was kind of difficult because I was, st I was standing in my painting at the moment. Um, and I, I know you've all probably had these things happen to you where you go, now, now what do I do? You know, race across the carpet and not that it was a beautiful spot, early days of art. Now I'm going back real quick to this painting, which is already getting into media. This is about probably 50 inches wide by 30 inches high. It's owned by someone in Atlanta. And um, I don't know where it is now. Um, but I moved to New York, drove my Volkswagen to New York in 1981, bust in to get out of the South. And um, you can see not too long, here's 1983. This is called jury duty. Everywhere I went in New York, I would come back and paint it in my little one room apartment. Uh, which I rented from uh, Mr. Johnson from Argentina for $100 a week. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was something. Um, but uh, whether I went to jury duty or was just out working, I was always doing freelance work to support my art habit. Um, you can see the squares like coming in, the, the judge's robe. Like I'm, I'm sort of seeing the spaces in between things and, and the pixels, what I call pixels or squares of information are starting to come into my work, which is kind of becoming like little video montages of, of things going on. This is called, um, You Are the Sunshine of My Life Long Distance. Um, the squares, the media, everything going on in the city just lit me up. And I was coming back to my little one room where I you know, could take a bath and cook and sleep you know, without even walking five feet. You know, these places in New York City when you're beginning, um, but my canvases are kind of the same. Everything was meshing together in one space, like a little video montage. Uh, this is, yeah, you're the sunshine of my life, long distance, again, 83. And um, they just continued like this, more and more information paintings, and they got so tight, so, so tight. Um, you can see this, this is a painting, it's 36 by 50. Uh, Picasso's woman, even a classical piece like this, I plugged in her iron. She's got, it's a little dark, this piece, but there are little squares in her TV set. There's squares going through her head. I was painting sort of information coming, coming her brainwaves and brainwaves between us and, and among us. Uh, this is called Bar Talk. And again, this is oil on canvas, but look how tight they're getting. It's almost like I'm trying to paint math inside these pieces. They're conversing at a bar, they're thinking about things, little pom-pom trees and squares are everywhere. Squares are coming everywhere. You don't just go to the park and walk your dog. This is called walk la dog. And of course I'm working freelance uh, in various corporations um, while I'm getting new to Manhattan and don't know anybody. And uh, I remember my friends in Atlanta calling because I had had a few shows in Atlanta and I remember they called me, I think in six months and said, well, do you have a show yet? And I said, I'm still trying to find the laundromat, but I was having a wonderful affair with New York City. I feel absolutely so in love with it. Um, but here we have a woman, this is about 60 inches high and uh, it's getting tighter and tighter. I'm actually taping things on the screen now and you can see the squares coming in. I'm racing forward a few years and now we're getting into digital. Um, oops, that shouldn't be there, that should be later. Uh, this is a digital piece where I was commissioned 
to do the front of Racing Down the Information Highway, an interview with Al Gore. And he actually signed this piece for me, three of these. And I have these called Electronic Directions, but this slide's in the wrong place. It should be a little forward. It, I designed this whole um, zine, which is about 11 by 17, so that when they folded it up and put it in the mail, it still worked out. So the address is in the bottom left corner. And it's all about uh, New York and America just pushing, pumping, pumping, going. Um, and I was actually at the World Trade Center at that time where I worked for 10 years off and on. Um, but I'm going back to my information paintings. Sorry, that was uh, a little bit early. Uh, but you can see this is called New York Property Blues. Small drawing, 11 by 14. And I called all these information paintings and information drawings because I am drawing emotions and things going on, but I'm also trying to draw information, a new kind of vocabulary coming into my work, squares, little electronic squares. Um, so it's called Kevin and Jane Take a Walk in New York. It's owned by a collector of mine, owns a lot of my work in Newport. Uh, and what's sad about PowerPoint, you don't get size. This is, this is about... Uh, eight by 12, and this next one uh, where I started painting uh, Wall Street Boys as well, part of my information paintings. Um, this one is the 60 inch high oil painting. It's called Big Boys Don't Cry. So these all these monsters just romping off to Wall Street and all the squares are there. I'm watching the time because I have a lot here. Um, okay, and then this interruption in my life. Um, boy, I just tell young students, I say, if you have an interruption and it seems important, go for it. And it just, it just sent a curveball into my, into my work, but I, I, I was no longer doing canvas. I took the earliest courses at School of Visual Arts because I was, I was painting with, with my, my paintbrush was getting unloose and I, I needed those, those mathematical pixels to, to continue on. Um, so uh, you can see that I took several steps backward. I mean, people look at this and go, it's so crude, you know, but this is, I was thrilled to death to get these little, see those little edges. And this is called brush and box. And it includes the toolbox in it, but I, I don't want to move PowerPoint, I can't. Um, and this was a very early computer and uh, I was drawing with a mouse, but I had the squares I was looking for. So, um, you know, I was definitely now having to work a lot more um, because, uh, you know, outside in commercial art as well, because people didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, with the computer and there were, a couple of other people doing this at this time too, but things moved along fast and I got very involved. Um, there was no graduate degree or I mean, there was no even undergraduate. I went to a school of visual arts and got out here, started a group with other artists called Picture Element, started um, painting on my computer and um, loading these to floppy disk and then printing them out on Chrome. This is called History's Interloper Intruder. The, it's my salute to the almighty plug. AT&T does have eight of these in their supercomputer facility, which thrilled me to death. And things were getting pretty exciting, actually. Um, this is called Dead Umbrellas. And as I keep going along here, you'll see that there's more, I get more and more colors. And I insisted on always putting the tools inside the painting, like you can see the toolbox in there. Um, this is after a dark day in New York City. And I just love these little helpless little animals I would see on the you know, bent umbrellas. And so that's what this piece is called. It's output to a 36 by 48 chrome. And I'm getting better tools. So they're getting richer. The pieces are getting richer. And then here we have capitalism again, rearing its head in my work, which it always does. Um, this is called Washington Pig. And um, it has for sale in his eyes. It has honk if you love Jesus in his nose. It has the words to go in five different languages. Um, and it's, um, it's a very, uh, bright and and um, kind of um, it's I don't know I don't know if a kind of plastic or it's 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 a takeoff on the dollar bill but it's gone much further as you can see uh, this is a light box which it's backlit by light and uh, I have it I, I have it in my my home and uh, four out of ten have been sold and it's um, 36 high by 50 inches wide and it really it really makes a statement good old George uh, Africa's in his ear, and uh, it's kind of playful, and yet it's also very serious. There's a quote by Noam Chomsky in here, and I've kind of turned it around and says, consent to manufacture, uh, every, every, every man needs a wife and a dog, and I mean, all, there's a gun in here. There are all sorts of multi-layers are starting to come into my paintings, because I found out, wow, I mean, I can just keep painting on this flat surface and no end to the amount of layers that can go in this stuff. This is a piece called information woman 
and we're in the uh, 1995. Things were really hopping. I was doing a lot um, working at the World Trade Center and finding that exciting too, learning about fonts and all sorts of rules that I hadn't really learned as much about probably in fine art. But um, this piece is called Information Woman. And I was using the equipment at the World Trade Center. It was like my graduate school. I mean, I'd work all day and help um, Deloitte start their new media department, which I kind of enjoyed doing. And I had tons of energy. So I'd come home and, and do stuff for them. And then I'd come home and do things like this, uh, Information Woman. Um, and it's all about a woman who's being taken over by her thoughts. And it's, it's kind of silly and crazy. Uh, it takes five minutes to play this piece, which I've just recently resurrected. I guess we have time for it. Um, so I'm gonna just play, maybe I'll play part of it. But I started working in animation a little bit from doing these presentations at Deloitte, these boring presentations. Well, I never, we didn't, ours weren't that boring, but I would use the equipment and the kind of things I had to come home at night and make things like this piece. So you're watching, I've made it into a video recently. <laughs> covered by her thoughts. And remember, this is like early digital. This is 95. I don't even in digital about 10 to 12 years with even doing a video like on your computer and making it. This is all made from things within the computer. It's very rough audio, but the fact that I've resurrected this recently, I'm just so excited to see Information Woman coming back to life. There's so many damn trees. Here's my arm. Okay, I'm going forward through it a little bit, but it keeps going and different sounds come up and it's it's just kind of a crazy madness. I mean, it's, this comes out of her elbow. The beach comes out of her elbow. It's, it's sort of like we live in our TVs. I'll just play it a little bit more, go to the end. Special thanks, always gave credit. Music by Carmen, great guy. All right, going forward, here's another piece at that time. I was doing uh, all these graphs and things. I worked for Lehman Brothers at one time, looking out over the Statue of Liberty and World Trade Center One. And uh, we we were in this like, late night department, you know, working from three in the afternoon till 12. And they come in and bring in these, I need to show how, you know, uh, you know uh, Microsoft or what, I have to compare this and I need a chart that shows 20 billion versus the years going from 95 to, to 2000 or whatever. And, you know, you just, we did these crazy graphs from Excel and I came home and made this piece called the world's greatest bar chart. And it, it analyzes absolutely nothing really, you know, and, but it is, it is an animated piece. And I'm now working with my young programmer who wasn't even born at this time uh, that I made this piece. <laughs> I know it's really incredible these conversations we have, but he, we are actually being able to go back and resurrect this piece. One thing, um, working in digital is softwares change and some 
some go out and digital is becoming a, a, such an important thing that, that some museums are getting departments now where they learn how to roll up things. But that's what this would be called. I've, I've recently rolled it up and it's going to launch pretty soon and I'll share it with all of you. But it's, it's actually a piece on the wall that's a chrome that is output. Um, and then it's also, a, it's also I, I'm always going deep inside the layers of the painting and this animated piece, um, you go around all these things and audio comes up and videos come up and it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, this is a little pixelated shot, but early, early digital show in Soho. You can see uh, we had a few people there. They were pretty excited. Um, and these are all big pieces of mine that are digital art at that time, very early on in digital. I was working at Deloitte and this just gives you a little montage. Um, uh, it was exciting, American Express, WSJ.com, Lehman Brothers, always down at the World Trade Center. And it was heady stuff, learning great things. And my fine art friends would come in and work with me. I'd get these huge budgets to do things. Like I got 20,000 just to make this set. This is in 1997, to make this send off for Bill Perrette at Deloitte that um, we launched at Le Cirque. And, and we kind of based it on the Michael more um, finding the guy in Flint, you know, where you had to, we, everybody bribed, um, it's a little video of bribing uh, everyone at the World Trade Center with Dunkin', with donuts, because Krispy Kreme donuts had just come to the World Trade Center. Uh, I started a group called Picture Element, and we met at my house every uh, month for about six years, did shows together. We did uh, Exquisite Corpse, a version of Exquisite Corpse, which you, you remember with the Dadaists, when we traded, each of us added something to it as it went along. But these are early kind of documentation. Things are moving along. And I was asked by uh, Rico Moresca Gallery to, they heard me speak. I was starting to speak uh, quite a bit at conferences. And they heard me speak and say, could you do a, a digital show? We do mostly folk art, but could you do a digital show for us and help help us get it together? And uh, that led to about a year collaboration called Code. And we had people from all over the world, actually artists that were invited into this. And uh, this was the invitation, C-O-D-E, that uh, Roger Rico uh, designed. It was really nice. Um, and I curated the show and here's a, this show was absolutely packed. School buses came from all over New York, three television networks, covered it and I had a architect friend, Michael Davis, who did the Sony playground up at the Sony building, helped me make this multi-leveled computer gymnasium. You walked into the Rico Moresco space and the computers were at different levels. So there's some really low for kids, for kids to play on. And uh, we also had immersive, there's Michael Gelman uh, immersing on the lower right. And we had Laurie Anderson came and immersed and and Lou Reed and man, it was a scene. It was, it was such a scene. It nearly killed us all. Uh, and they hadn't figured out how to sell digital. You know, that's what happens, all these great things. You do them and they're, it was great. I don't take back a moment, but um, we didn't know quite, they, did, they, they, had, they were eager to get back to their folk art because they really went all out on that. It was a fast, it was a wonderful show. Um, here's another, I started showing at the American Gallery on the Lower East Side. And this was my invitation. And um, I remember, I think it was Max Anderson of the Whitney wrote back and he didn't make it to that opening, but he came later. He said, wow, this is the most innovative invitation. He stuck it, you stick it in your computer and it would say, come to this amazing show. And you know, it was kind of tongue in cheek, um, it would play. And uh, you'd bring your little CD and I'd sign it at the show. And the show had these pink plastic, um, I got these blow up um, furniture pieces and I had animations playing on the wall like this one. Again, I'm doing like little Perrier things. And there was water on the land and it was good for the first two million years. There's always a little spiritual aspect in my stuff, but yeah, there was water upon the land and it was good for the first two million years. That's the point of that one. Um, here's another quick one. How are we on time? Okay, I'm, I'm rolling along. Here. The body is a temple of the Lord. Mm. Ooh. Ah, a terrific smell. So I was doing all these products. I was also drawing products. I don't have half the work that I've done in here. Um, 
but uh, I had a show of the drawings of things like Tylenol, Coca-Cola. It's kind of a takeoff on pop and it was done with uh, traditional media. And we had those pieces playing on the ceiling and uh, the local guys in the East Village would come and hang out and look up at this stuff. And they were just really into it. It was a really fun show at the American Gallery. We're in the late, uh, I think this is year, we're getting into year 2000, pretty close here. This is my uh, wonderful friend, uh, the former uh, curator at the Metropolitan of Rembrandt and 17th century art, Walter Lika on the left. And another friend who, um, I can't think of his name right now, but I know it uh, on the right. And and I was, I look back at this, I go, God, I was a little hottie, look at that. Anyway, um, we all have our day. But it was, a, it was a fun show and I always like making shows that just, you know, it's the art, but I like, I like inviting everybody in and having a bit of a party about it. Um, this was in Forbes magazine. I was glad to be in Forbes magazine with David Hockney. And I was thrilled about that. I went out and bought every Forbes magazine I could find, you know, in lower Manhattan. Um, I was just so excited. And, uh, you know, I'm leading up to something here. Uh, I, I was, it was, it was, it was a hot time in the dot com. I mean, I was making lots of money, I have to say. Uh, I had just gone to the Wall Street Journal online to do the most creative things you could. And, uh, you know, I was showing a lot and people were really talking about digital art. And uh, I, I guess, you know, we, we don't know what can happen in our lives, but we all get hit with tragedy. And I certainly did. Um, what could possibly go wrong? Well, we know what went wrong. And you know, this was really my home uh, away from home. I lived within 12 blocks too. Uh, but here's our office at the Wall Street Journal online the day that I didn't get into work because I was let go, even though I'd just been paid a signing bonus along with a huge salary. I mean, I look back now, I went, I was making 120K and I was paid $20,000 to, to get away from Deloitte and come to them to start their creative storytelling online. And I was working for a woman I loved who I'd worked for before and it was so exciting and I, I loved working there. And I'd bring my fine art prints in and we'd jam and talk about how we do things corporately. And then I go up to the Whitney and talk to people. And, you know, it was just very, uh, the sky was the limit. But as we know, hmm, don't get too arrogant ever because the world will let you know that you're not the star and you can't always prepare for things. And I'm, I'm showing this because it led to Loss can lead to some of the best works you ever do if you can survive it. <laughs> I actually went into a deep depression and came out to Shelter Island and had to sell our place in New York. And I was so lucky to be alive. I mean, my mother was so happy. When the World Trade Center came down after the dot-com fell, she called me and said, oh, I'm just so glad you weren't still working at the World Trade Center. You know, So it's kind of funny if you look back, but I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was punt painting things from the dump for a while, but I, I'd never had a really lapsed period. I, I'm a high energy person, but I just so depressed and New York was always home. And um, I went into, I was still in New York. Um, we were hanging in, James and I both had lost our jobs after buying another place, you know? And so we sold our New York place and I came in for a show by Helen Evans uh, of, of iconography, which is, I've never really been interested in icons, Byzantine, but it said that um, icons were a source of comfort to a nation besieged. And here I was working in this powerful medium. I knew web design, I, I knew some animation, I was knew how to create multi-layered paintings in this medium. And I thought, what's the point? What's the point of making another artwork right now? How, how what does it have to offer? And people go, oh, look at your art. I was, couldn't figure out why I do art again. And uh, I, I actually went, after I heard that icons were a source of comfort to a nation besieged, I, I went and took this icon writing course. And, and I am a religious, I'd say I'm religious, but I'm religious, I mean, I'm multi-religious. I, I think I've told you this, but I'm a, I also have been ordained as an interfaith minister that came later, but I'm interested in all the religions. I come from a Christian source though, and that story has always been fascinating. But I went and painted over a week. It's like doing a prayer, this multi-layered, rigorous, like Eastern kind of painting that's not about your expression. I mean, my Rabboni, it was a very serious class and you're quiet and you do a prayer. And he would come by and like, take my hand and say, Miss Diamond, please, too expressive. Watch the icon, paint, copy. I was the only professional artist in the class. You don't have to be an artist to do an icon. You just 
follow the lines, but there's something very beautiful and rigorous. I mean, and, and that each, each layer of egg tempera means something and has a soulfulness to it. And what, and, and the reason that the no, the eyes are the only big thing on her face. And it's, it's like a window, this kind of painting is flat as a pancake, really, really flat washes of egg tempera and uh, a, a gold leaf at the end. Um, and just penitent prayer and you're all painting the same thing but they all look a little different and and yet it's it has this relationship as if you're going in the painting and having a some kind of spiritual window into something else I mean that's what icons are reported to do that when people have them they they have them on the wall and they enter into a relationship that goes beyond the wall and you know I think I've been trying to do that ever since I put those tape recorders up at my other painting well long story short it I came back and made this piece, came bursting out of me called Pale Mail of Pilgrimage. And, um, oh, it's 137. Uh, I could play this piece, well, I could show you part of it, but it's a multi, multi-layered piece about the hawk pale mail. Uh, it says, love one another in the center. And it was like this heartfelt, I came back and just said, oh, I do all these layers in Photoshop. I, I can let people into these layers and I'm a web designer. So I, I did a painting that is also a, a, an interactive website. And that's where this, these things I call diamondscapes came out. And it was after you know many years of working in this medium. And I did call it diamondscapes. I mean, and when people ask me, I go, hey, you know, women aren't usually remembered for much of anything unless we, you know, say we are. And also it was a good name. People don't want it's a it it seems to work. Um but I don't always lead with it because that's it's not so that other people won't do these kind of works. Uh, people are doing a lot of art and storytelling. Uh, but in this case, you're looking at this piece, which is 48 by 24, one edition. I have a smaller edition too. And there'll be a QR call code on the side. I'll just click into it really quick. And you go inside the painting and it has an audio. You can either play it or I'm just gonna zip through it real quickly, but all the layers of the painting this is not a, a, a slideshow, even though I'm using an analog format. You're going deep inside every layer in the painting and you can go in and out of it yourself. So while you're looking at the painting, a lot of people who would look at a piece like this- Lift your wings and with all respect to too, the- But I'm turning it off. There's a little, see this little audio divide. on the bottom left? You can go in and turn the audio off and on. But while you're looking at the painting, you can take your phone and go inside this QR code beside it and and, lift up these layers. I mean, I love bringing people access to art as long as it doesn't dummy it down. One time a, a, a dealer looking at my work said, don't dummy down. And I was like, why not? I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's not that I want to dummy down, but I, I'm on the ground and I like, I like other people besides the art world to be part of what I'm doing. So by letting them come in and see how this piece is made, uh, that doesn't hurt anything. And then I have an information button that sources everything um about this piece and 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 in a kind of twist of fate which is kind of strange uh the piece um is actually it, it is in the collection of the 9-11 memorial museum they came to see it and they said wow this piece is about hope um most of our things in the collection are about disaster and terror and and so it is in their permanent collection so that's been a it's been interesting it was an interesting ride coming from just not knowing what i was going to do uh, now, how do I get back? Okay, see, this PowerPoint. All right, so here's Walter Lika again, my friend, the late curator at the Met. I say late because he died in a tragic train accident and he was one of my biggest champions from 1995 till a couple of years ago. And, you know, when you lose a, a, not only a friend, but a champion of your art, it, it's a big loss, but, but you keep going. Um, and we did this, he, he, was, he spoke at a um, gallery show that I did where he was the guest speaker and we raised $3,000 uh, for breast cancer. And he's speaking about pale mail, which he actually purchased for his office and wanted to give to the Met, um, but I wasn't able to prove it. And the Met was really difficult to deal with. And it was, it was a very hard time. Those were his wishes, but um, he didn't get his wish. <laughs> And I kept going, but I think about him a lot and appreciate his support. I, I really am a kind of traditional artist, which is something he related to the fact that, you know, he always talked about how Rembrandt was 
doing um, these new things called etchings, you know, in, in his time. And, and they weren't even numbering them because they didn't know what they really, you know, they just thought, look, we can take these around, not just one painting. You can, you know, democracy is always tied up with technology and it's messy at first, but it keeps rising. Um, I'm showing you this because this was my next big commission out here. I'm skipping forward. I made it through uh, a few years uh, and getting back into the diamond skates gave me a whole kind of new life approach. But these pieces take a year to two or more to make. And this was a commission by uh, the Shelter Island Historical Society out here, a woman who really loves art and saw my work said, look, I want to get a few grants and I'd love for you to tell a story in the Historical Society, 700, three, 700 years of seven generations of Haven's House, this family. So I went and took all these pictures and photos and and history and 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 I, instead of doing it in Excel and I started doing it that way and then I just pasted it on the wall with like, it's sort of like a big math block where across you're going seven generations and down on the left I have people, emotions, structure and the Z space, which is the heart of the painting is where I stuck everything to make the diamond scape. And um, this is, um, you can see this, um, I, people said, what are you doing? I said, I'm painting dust. And this looks very abstract, I realized, because I'm, I, I had all these old artifacts and it's just layers and layers. I mean, there are hundreds, maybe a thousand layers in this piece. Uh, not that I use every one, but uh, I'm gonna go quickly inside this. What's our timing? Okay, 142. Um, but it just shows, here you are at the, ha at, you're, in that, you're in the website now, but it just shows you, you go through time and it shows the painting building up. And I'm really working in the deep Z space. This I work is dedicated. Oh, let me turn off the sound. The you can always go play this yourself and I can give you guys the URLs, but you're building into this final piece. Um, and you can see the, woman, the house, the flag, uh, the sheep, the woman's dress. She was kind of the anchor for the whole thing. This, I mean, it's all about these seven generations of men, but. I'll be damned if I wasn't going to get a woman in there very prominently. So here she is. Her dress is sort of the melody for the piece. And of course, the women were a part of this history. And there's information. So it's I'm, I'm getting to a whole nother thing where a painting becomes a painting, yes, on the wall. This is a light box on the wall that's four feet wide by three feet high. It stays on all the time at the historical society. And you look at it and people, it's an abstract sort of, because it looks like at the end of it, it I mean, it, you see, it looks like this. Um, but then people go in with their iPad and they interact with it. Uh, I'm going to show you this child, Maeve, interacting with it so you get an idea with her iPad. Yeah. What are you looking for? Oh, yeah, the document. Exactly. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, you can. That's true. And then you can kind of see the book right there. Right. Oh, there's another flag on the other side. That was really hard to find. <laughs> yeah, the British flag. It's looking, easier to find the American flag, I think. I was looking for the one where it was the guy in the other guy's arms because that was one of the things. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, the wheel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you got that one. So whenever she clicks on things, they come up 100% to her. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm saving the layers and there's information in this. Skipping along here, you can see how abstract these works are. This is just one little area of Haven's house. There's a little uh, sheep, there's building blocks, children's building blocks, there's an eagle, the Civil War. I mean, it, this is just shows how abstract these pieces are becoming in a way. Um, I'm going along here. Okay, it's 145. I want to have time to talk to you guys a little bit. Um, I had a gun show at Carter Burden. They chose these guns that I was also doing, aside from Diamond Scapes, which take, I call a Diamond Scape, I guess, a, a novel, and whereas the guns are more like poems where I'm getting back just to my drawing. And um, I, I don't own a gun, and, and yet I'm always responding, like I did recently with my new Lincolns, uh, I respond to America and the politics and things going on. And of course there were killings every other day. And um, I just, I'd been doing these other artifact drawings, which I'm not showing here because I knew this was gonna get long, but um, the guns came out of the artifacts. I mean, I think it's so interesting that, that we, we might turn to dust, but our, our, our spoons and our engraving, our forks and our guns and all these other machines that people, we all make as people, human beings, they're, they're gonna last forever. 
and a gun is a, a beautiful evil thing. I mean, this is this is a Kalashnikov, and it's hanging up in my studio here. Um, but uh, I always I found it hard actually the gun series, even though I think they're some of my finest drawings actually. But but they're problematic, and I made it very clear I'm giving to every town for gun safety. But you know, it, it's um, they 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 have a beauty and evilness both to them. And a lot of them are about sort of this force of male and female power. I mean, if you look at how a gun works, there are all these checks and things of like, don't let that seed go flying out and kill somebody. Hold it in, let me protect it. I'm not ready to shoot this person. Um, there are lots of thoughts going on in my mind. This is a video that you can go to online. And it just shows my process when I'm working and my menu. I'm drawing with that tool, the Wacom, and it's feeling my, my pressure. Now this is sped up. Um, and I'm looking at a gun on another monitor. That's a, um, this is an original drawing of the gun. And I'm just like, you pick your palette and your strokes and your tones and your, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm still drawing. It's just with another tool. Um, this is a close-up of a gun, so you can see how abstract they are. And you know, I'm finally getting that 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 edge that I want that speaks to I think our times. And I'm skipping really fast now. We're almost at the end here. Um, this is a uh, my most recent piece that's hanging in a museum, the Children's Museum, this summer. This is this is a Children's Museum in Bridgehampton, and we just hung this piece. And I worked this summer with a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, New York State Council for the Arts. Um, several other grants and wonderful grants, um, the Living Foundation and another community grant, really great that they supported this. But I worked online with these kids. It had been planned a year before that I'd work with them, but then we didn't know we'd have COVID. And I did this whole piece with these 25 kids and their families online in Zoom, where they created this piece with me and it's there. I'm loading my brush with their art. This is a conceptual piece. I mean, I never thought I'd just be strictly a conceptual artist, but in a way this is. I mean, and, and you can go inside this painting too. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but they were just thrilled to death. And they're so excited that their, their art is on the museum wall and the Hamptons Film Festival did a screening of it. And they're, you know, it just, and they were so delightful, these kids. They were just precious. Um, to work with and so excited and oh my god I loved it and I met their bunny rabbits in the classes and they'd hold up their pets and oh sweet as sweet 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 uh, I'm going fast because I'm pretty busy these days and in COVID um, I you know it's a distressing time but at the same time if you're a creative I, I'm doing this uh, collaboration with um, oh it's Gay Olivan she has to wait I love her. She's pretty amazing. You guys probably know her. Great scholar um, and artist. Well, mostly scholar, but she's a good artist too. Uh, I recently spoke to her class, but, um, and I did want to mention Gail in this because I actually went with Gail to Japan to talk about pale male. And you know what I loved about that? The piece has Jesus in it. She loves the piece and she's Jewish. And we have all these wonderful conversations about uh, religion together. Um, so this is a piece with a woman in Tehran. I'm doing a collaboration through a new group I've become a part of called Tech Expressionism. You can find it on um, the hashtag on Instagram, Tech Expressionism. And it, it's a group of people who started by this guy out here in Long Island, Colin Goldberg. And he's, he's saying there are a lot of people using technology and expression, and it's not the same as media art. So we're, we're all enjoying each other. And I, I signed up for doing a collaboration with this woman in Tehran, and this is our end result. Here's a painting I'm working on right now, multi-layered, from a book by uh, Haruki Murakami, a uh, very visual kind of guy. And it's a diamond scape of, it's not quite a diamond scape yet, but you can see it's, it's uh, got a lot of layers going on. Um, here, are my latest things are the Lincolns, came popping out lately in response to what's going on in our world, total digital drawing. And here's the Lincoln Goes Blue with many of you, some of you, your work in there, along with some tech expressionist artists too. And what's funny is I picked up a pencil for the first time in about 10 years, a real pencil. And I did a charcoal of Lincoln. And I thought I'd end this back where we kind of started, you know, because uh, everything goes around. Um, it's really all about painting and drawing to me. 
And, uh, and yet I'm still a digital girl. I mean, I, I went to see my doctor and I got an EKG and I, I asked him for a copy of my electrocardiogram. And um, he said, why? I said, I, I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be my next self portrait. And I think my portrait is gonna look something like this. And with that, I think I'll, I'll end this one. But thanks for listening. <laughs> Roz, that was fabulous. So oh. wonderful to see like just your evolution from the start all the way to finish. I mean, um, I think Bernice Kramer put in the chat that you could have a one woman show on Broadway. <laughs> Honey, if I, if I could find a way, I would love to have a retrospective and have all of you there and even do a piece with you sometime, but uh, thank you. I would, I would love to tell the story. I'm starting to talk a little bit to other classes and, and thank you. Um, I don't know how all this happened. You know, I can't operate a toaster. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sharing and let okay. you guys talk. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to go first, we have a little bit of time, so I want to make sure that we um, we get to you. There's Roz. There's a ton of stuff in the chat, so I'm going to be sure to send that to you directly, and I'm also going to put it in the follow up email. Oh, how nice! How do, I don't know how to send a chat. I didn't know you could. Oh yeah, yeah. So at the bottom, right next to the green share screen button, there's the chat button, and oh. you should be able to see everything everyone said. But I'm going to download. Oh, it. I see that, but I don't know how to save it. I mean, oh, I'll save it. I, oh, you can also, you. you can Thanks. also save it too, I think, but um, there's so much great feedback in the chat throughout your entire Oh, well, thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was fantastic. Love this group. Love this group. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, does anybody um, got questions or anything? Yeah. Or? Does anybody have a question? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Iris, it looks like he's got a saying, or Isaac. Oh, Isaac, let me see. Yes, I, um, I don't particularly like guns, but you made them look beautiful. What, I, I didn't hear what you said you did. What are you, are you working on them? Are they for anything in particular? They were a whole series I did. There were a series, a whole series I did and Carter Burton uh, actually showed them uh, in 2018 in the fall. Oh. And you know what, I've put them away. My own cousin was killed by gunfire. Uh, I think I told this later to Sarah, it's really kind of sad, um, about a, a, a month before the show opened. And I, you know, I just couldn't do another gun, but I have quite a few of them, They're lots. Beautiful. They're beautiful. Thank you. I'm thinking about putting them out there again a little bit. Thanks. Ellen Wallenstein, I see your hand raised if you want to unmute. There yeah, you. I, um, Oh my God, I don't even know what to say. I, but I want to ask, um, do, when you worked, do you listen to music? I sometimes do, I didn't used to, but now I sometimes do, I sometimes do. Yeah, I have a track I actually listen to, like with the Lincolns, you know, I, I have a whole track of things I, I just listen to in the background when I'm drawing them. And the reason I ask is because, you, you know, you've got, the, you've got the music with your pieces and, I, and it just went, so well watching you do it. So I was wondering if you also listened to music while you were making work, so. It's really, Ellen, yeah, thanks. I do a little bit and sometimes it gets so intense, I just have to turn it off because I, uh, but, but I haven't really done with in a mix in the way that those older flash shockwave pieces were, the animations. But what's funny is someone recently, um, uh, Peter Grossman, who I work with a lot, uh, I work on Zoom with, with a little small team and, He's recently something came out of him called Can You Hear Me God? It's a song and I think I'm gonna just do marks to the song and that'll be really wed to the music. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to trying that. Thank you. Great work. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pauline, I see your hand raised. If you want to unmute, you're you're muted right now. Oh, oh wait, no, you're unmuted now. There you go. Okay. Uh, do you print your own work or do you send it out to be printed? And what paper do you use? Great question. I actually do have a 19 by 13 printer. And so when I make an addition, I make it very clear that I do a, I mean, I'm always kind of thinking of going out physical. Um, I mean, that's where I think digital, if galleries can kind of catch on to that. And of course, Carter Burton was really cool to show. It's, it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I talk like my paintings, I go in multi layers, but it's been a hard road because for many years, people hear you do digital and they, they don't know that you can paint and draw and they don't quite get it. And also they didn't, the paradigm of how do you sell it? 
um, is a problem. But uh, to your point, I'm always thinking about what I'm going out to physically. So when I start a piece now, I'll go, oh, do I want this 48 by 64? And, um, and I don't even see it physically until it comes printing out, but I'm envisioning it and zooming in and out of my computer, just like you back up to your canvas. I have a 19 by 13 printer and I use sunset velvet rag paper that I order. And I always have that addition because then I can afford to make them, you know, 19 by 13 on this printer and I print them and it's archival inks. But if it gets big, which some of my pieces really do, I go out to a printer. I take my file and I go out to them. So um, both ways. But I mean, I feel like once the digital world keeps the sky's the limit. I mean, I'd love to make pale mail in tile, you know, in some church somewhere, stained glass window. You just have to be able to translate the digital language to the language they have. And that's still, you know, mm -hmm. problematic. But the new thing coming up with digital is online, uh, online places where you have provenance, where it can show, oh, Roz created this piece inside the computer and you have the first one and you can buy it. And I'm thinking about getting into that game a little bit, but, um, but I still love having a gallery wall and physical space. And I think that's, and I love that the pieces I do kind of tie to both, like you can do a show and then you can also go and go online, see the story behind it, or, you mm -hmm. know, you can kind of promote the show, help the gallery promote. So it's a collaborative effort. Um, Alan, you have your hand up next. Thank you. Um, I, I'm just really impressed by your work and Mostly uh, what comes through for me is the strength of your character. Uh, and, and you can see that through the work. I do have one question for you, which is kind of maybe difficult to answer. Um, it, how, did, how did being so close to the World Trade Center disaster affect you and your work? I, I'm sorry if that's a real personal question, but. Oh no, I even spoke about it. It's the cathartic moment in my work where, you know, it stopped me in my tracks, totally. Just stopped me. I, I didn't do any work for a couple of years. I was painting containers out of the dump out here in Shelter Island, painting them different colors once in a while with an old friend of mine and watching Jeopardy and <laughs> drinking Coca-Cola and alcohol too. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I, I, it really, I, I didn't see any point in continuing to show all these fabulous things I could do with new media. I mean, I guess in art, we always get back to what, what, what is it about that piece that tugs you and brings you, what made us become artists, you know? I, I think it made me, it, there was like a rebirth. And when I went and did this, the icon painting class that I, I told you guys about, I, I, I sort of saw, oh, I can, my paintings can have meaningfulness to people in a different way. And, and my spirit side and my art side have, have been joining closer and closer together, even in the guns. Um, so it was some, um, yeah, no, I was, I thought it was over. I thought that was it. I mean, I was flying high and uh, it's really, I don't know, but I also think it, it did develop me in ways that I, I just, um, you know, we've all lived through tragedies. Once you're at a certain age, you've all lived through things that are tough, really tough. Um, and I was lucky not to die, but I, I was in a dark, yeah, very depressed. And, uh, but came out and, and I responded, if you just keep responding to life, I think when you're really like, what does it all matter? I, I would just say to that, well, you know what? Everything matters, everything. You know, you do a show and you, you don't even know what happens, you know, and, and someone comes up to you later and says, oh, I've had your, your piece in my, even if it's just the invitation on my refrigerator, I mean, you know, your art, and I say this to all of you, because I, we all go through this, but it just, your art matters, it matters. And I know there are times, at least I feel like, oh, what the hell, you know, but um, it's nice when you get a response like this too. I mean, digital media has been, it hasn't, it's been exciting, but it's also, boy, so many shut doors. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's digital. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do? Give up the thing that's your adventure? No, you just, I just, you know, anyway. Mary, I think is raising her hand. Mary, yeah, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, oh, I love your work. It's really incredible, especially your journey from the Thank beginning you. to end. And I, after my kids were born, I stopped oil painting and welding and glass work because I was, there were so many fumes and all that. And I just was doing digital because they couldn't eat it. 
you know, they, it was <laughs> safe. It was safe and clean because they were right. always on top of me. I took them everywhere with me. So oh. for years, I was doing really intense uh, photos. Uh, we were volunteering at the American Museum of Natural History, and I volunteered in the butterfly collection and was able to get really digital photos. I, it was opened up an amazing world. That's great. Um, it is. I mean, look at the world we've opened up with each other. I didn't know you guys. I mean, we mm -hmm. see each other at openings and some of you've known each other a lot longer. I'm a newer gallery, I mean, artist in the gallery in the last couple of years. But wow, I mean, you I, you know, one of my things is to bring intimacy to this space and you can see it's possible, except there's nothing like the physical actually, but it's it can be pretty cool, you know? Thanks Thank for sharing you. that. Thank you. Um, Helen Arani, I see you and Amari, I see you. And then I think, um, Helen, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Hold on a second. There you go. Hey, Ross. Uh, I really liked everything. I thought it was fabulous. I began uh, computer graphics when I was in 1980. Wow. Because, uh, I was a textbook designer and it was going out of style what I did and I asked my brother what to do and he said take up computer graphics which I had never heard of and I was in a pilot course at the New York Institute of Technology sure it was like 12 people in the northeast but they didn't have enough people you were really supposed to be uh, have a bachelor's which I didn't have so I ended up uh, doing it but I always uh instead of really applying it to work I used it as a medium it's like a tool for artistic tool yeah and it uh I don't think a lot of people understand that they say oh it's so fast and the machine is doing it but yeah, no. somebody has to press the button and somebody has to draw the line. Absolutely, I, I Helen. What you did is, is really great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I relate to all of you because it's painting and drawing and it's what we say and what we give. So there you go. Um, I, I also come from a graphic uh, designer background and I enjoyed watching everything and was very inspired. Uh, but I do have a question. Um, I noticed you had Japanese characters like Soku, and I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the Japanese and why that's in there. Um, I'm trying to remember which piece that was in, but um, I did, when I lived on the Lower East Side on Forsyth Street, I, um, it was very close to Chinatown and I, I always loved calligraphy and I started putting calligraphy in my work and uh, you know just the painted line and the brush it just it matters to me so much language um, I don't know if that answers it but that that's really it I can't remember which piece had that but I have used calligraphy in my work because I, I just love the strokes and the language and I feel the language we're entering you look at this screen of all of us together you know my portrait will be my last year like squunched down on Instagram and um, really, I mean, we're entering a new alphabet. So I always found that that alphabet, like kanji and, um, and hieroglyphics is, we're entering a new visual alphabet. And I think artists, man, we, we, it's gonna be really fascinating to see where this goes. I hope people keep heart and, and skills and, and color and form. That, that's still gonna drive it, you know? Uh, artists is dangerous, beauty's dangerous, and we should keep it that way. This has been so wonderful, Roz. Thank you so much. What a great presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks all of you. I love your questions. See you soon. See you next week. Yeah, see you guys. Um, actually, I wanted to say I have to, we're doing an install next, next Thursday, the 4th, right? Yes. Um, and I have to go pick up some artwork. So I won't be able to be at the Zoom next week. You all are more than, I think you can still come to the Zoom, even if I'm not here. Um, I won't be writing a follow-up because I'll, I'll be installing, but if you wanted to come, I'll still send out the link and you guys can yeah. do what you want. If somebody wants to, you know, step up to the bat and host it, let me know. If not, 
If people want to do it, I could host it if people want to do it. Um, uh, you know, and somebody, it's nice when someone presents so, you know, or we could have a topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe reach out to me if you guys have ideas for topics. Roz, if you want to host it, that would be great. I'd be happy to host it. I, I don't think I'll do as well as Sarah does, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I've had a year of practice. We've almost been doing this. I mean, in a couple months, mm -hmm. it'll be a year. So, oh, wow. and you know, if not, I'll come up, we could come up with a few themes, layers, you know, uh, you know, what do you do with, I mean, there are other ways that people are speaking to our information age that aren't using digital mm -hmm. computers. And you know, there are quite a few topics we could bring up and yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, what's one thing that I've been really loving about these presentations and what's so great, Roz, about yours is um, that you do work digitally and a lot of people, we have a lot of painters, um, we've had some sculptors, um, I'd love to see some photographers present, um, you know, it's just really nice to see all these different mediums from everyone, so. Sure, yeah, I'm happy, I own an account so I can host it, okay, I can host great. it on a Zoom account, so let me know and um, I don't know, I'll coordinate, coordinate with Sarah a little bit just to make, yeah. well, every no, don't really need to do much. They just sign on. I will yeah. send an invitation. Oh, but I have to invite everybody. Well, no, I think emails. we can use the same link, uh, the same link and password. It'll still, oh. I don't think I even have to be here. Um, well, but Sarah, oh, I think you have, to, I think you have to make Roz as co-host. Yeah, I, so I, and I'll figure out how to do that and, on and, my end with you, Roz. I can do yeah. uh, well, I can just host them. Oh, that's right. I have to be a co-host. I think, I, think I have to invite you to be the co-host. Okay. So Thank we'll see, we'll see how it works. <laughs> yeah. That we'll way you can use it'll, the same it'll it'll all, We'll see. It'll be an yeah. experience. <laughs> it'll be an experience, but I, I just won't be here. Um, but I want you guys to be able to meet even if I can't be. So. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Roz. That was wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Thank have you. a great week, and I'll amazing, see you the Rob. second week of February. Thank you. Thank Let you me know if you want to present. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. It's always nice to see everybody as everybody goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Grace Wapner, um, it's nice to see you. I don't know if you've joined us before, but it's so nice to see you. You're muted right now. I can't hear you, but I can I can see your beautiful face and it's it's really great. And Sylvia, it's nice to see you too. I don't see you as often either. So thanks for coming. Bye, Sarah. Have a great installation. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be nice. <laughs> I want here's my cat. She's been sitting in my lap this whole time. Aww. <laughs> Aww. She's very good. All right, bye. Bye-bye.